Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today, and welcome to Drip Feed, this random series I do whenever my leaky friends have things to share on the wild web about games we're all interested in. Today I'm joined by my good pal Jeff Grubb. Thank you, Jeff, so much for joining me. And we're gonna be talking a little about uh, Fallout New Vegas 2, Jeff, which you know me, man. I'm all about the Fallout. <laughs> I, I'm obsessed. So, like, right when you broke the news, I was in your DMs like, hey, man, yes. what are you up to this week? <laughs> I wasn't surprised either. I'm like, there he is. There yeah. he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you making time for this, man. I, I obviously have a laundry list of questions for you on your recent reports revolving around Xbox, the, the status of the Fallout franchise. So, again, thank you so much for being here for this. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm happy to talk it through. Like, you know, there there isn't a ton to it, but I think that with your sort of insight, I think we can get in here and dig in and find some cool right. stuff with some uh, cool angles for people to consider. Right, so for those who haven't caught up on your recent reportings, again, you can find it on GamesBeat, Grub Snacks, Jeff's all over the place, right? But for those yeah. who don't know, uh, recently you said on GamesBeat Decides that the you got the nod, that conversations are happening revolving around a, yes. a new Fallout game of some kind with Obsidian, right? Right, yes, and I'll say that these are, uh, conversations that people have heard happen uh where it's like yeah the, 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 and that's all it is conversations are very easy to happen game development's very hard uh and, and committing people to do certain things is, is is hard but uh having you know conversations having chats that's cheap and yet still i thought it was worth bringing up because it was it's clear a clear indication that microsoft and bethesda and and bethesda game studios and everyone involved probably understands something needs to happen with fallout before bethesda game studios can really get back to it as much as right. they want to be the ones to you know author that going forward fallout's probably going to need another home in between now and then right right and there's so many exciting options for that it's something i've been really big on for those who have watched my channel they know for those who listen to finding duke it's something i don't shut up about that Xbox is in a really fortuitous position where you can take a look at all the studios they own just in-house and go, wow, you have Obsidian, you have mm -hmm. In Exile. Could you build a new studio? So let's start off at the top again with your current reports is that they're they're talking to Obsidian right now, right? This is kind of the move, even though Obsidian's plates relatively full. Yes. Uh, so yes, Obsidian, very busy. And, and we can go over all the projects, I'm sure, in a second that they're working on. But uh, uh, they uh, the way it was put to me is that the, the sentence happened where the, the, someone's like, yes, we want Obsidian to make Fallout New Vegas 2. And, you know, we, we could talk about what that means exactly. But uh, yeah, that, like, and it's, it's the kind of thing where it's like, okay, and everyone involved was like, yeah, that, that sounds right. Like, oh, of course, right now at this moment, everyone's very busy, but when, you know, the opportunity arises to do the next thing, does this make sense? It sounds like a lot of people are lining up to say, yes, it does make sense. And, and I, I agree, I think it does. Yes. Well, as you alluded to, you know, there's so many projects, right? We've got Grounded in, in it's gaining steam. It's heading to its full release this year. You've got Avowed, which is their kind of Skyrim competitors, the, the talk mm -hmm. of the town on that one. There's Josh Sawyer's RPG, which funny enough, I had you on for a video yes. on the channel about that one. Um, and then there's, I think, Carrie Patel's directing a game. Outer Worlds 2 is very, very early. Right. So they got a, a pretty full play here. I just want your read, because I know, again, these are early talks, so we can't say for certain what's happening. But if their goal here is to get a, a Fallout game out before Bethesda Game Studios, I imagine that by the time their plate is clear, it'll still already have been a long wait. So how do you see Obsidian sort of being the, the one that ends up with this franchise? Because to me, the, the way their plate's just naturally full and they're trying to build their own things and become popular in their own way, or more popular, I should say, is that this would likely end up somewhere else, even if I think it, it's the best solution to you know give it to them. Like, do you think they put a project to the side, like, okay, we'll, we'll put Outer Worlds 2 off to the side and we'll work on New Vegas 2 and get this out a little bit sooner? Uh, I, I, my hunch here is that they, uh, they find someone who, at Obsidian, that wants to oversee the project, and then they let Obsidian expand even further. Now, I know mm -hmm. Obsidian's already big, already gotten bigger, um, but they've sort they've also, uh, you know, I, I think they've proven that they are capable of handling a lot of ongoing projects and, and they're capable of handling, the, you know, the bur bureaucracy of expanding. Mm. Um, and, and that's something like a lot of studios do struggle with. And, and I think, um, you know, Playgrounds has, has begun to prove that to Microsoft, I think, where it's like, okay, we're going right. to keep giving you more and more and you can handle more and more. And that's awesome. And I think Obsidian's in the process of doing that as well. I mean, obviously they have a, a ton of stuff going on. Sure. Um, what, what, what's, what's one more, as long as they're able to hire up and, and able to do that. I, you know, they do have 
uh, teams in place that might be, you know, they're not going to be free in the next week, but by the end of this year, they they might, they could be in a position to sort of take that over. I mean, sure. we talked about it. Josh Sawyer's game sounds like it should come out later this year. So mm -hmm. is he going to be lined up ready to be like, okay, I'll do a follow up to, you know, our, our, our spiritual successor to Fallout New Vegas 2, whatever that's going to look like. Maybe, I, I, I don't know. It, to me, it sounds like it's all, it's very likely impossible though. Yeah, right. That that to me was the match made in heaven. I, I know Josh Sawyer has expressed in the past that he doesn't want to work on like another big game, but I just always think Fallout's this moving force where it, it's like yeah. you, you you might want to take that opportunity because he directed the, 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 the first New Vegas, if you will. Yeah, and, and, and I think he um, would have the freedom here to define it because the, 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 again, like let's, what is the impetus here? It is, get Fallout engaged back in the world. Like, let's keep this IP act as active as possible. What's it gonna take to make that happen? Uh, well, just time. If you're talking about Bethesda Game Studios making Fallout 5, like it's just gonna take time. Or if we have to be flexible and we have to also make it something stand apart that is almost certainly not going to be Fallout 5. Well, does that give it, more, does that give someone like Sawyer more freedom to define what this project sure. can look like? And can he um, sort of get away with more and that might excite him and then maybe he'll come back and it's like, in, in, in his eyes, yeah, it is a big major project, but it's also one that he could sort of uh, scope how he wants and it, and it could feel like a small game in the way that it's sort of uh, approaching uh, th this genre from maybe a different angle or something like that. I think all that is on the table. Right. That, that's certainly a very fun idea that Fallout fans have wanted for ages. Now, I remember you mentioning, and this was just a rumor you had seemingly heard in passing. I'd heard the same, but I didn't know how valid it was that In Exile could potentially take up the reins of the yeah. Fallout franchise. Again, this is very unconfirmed. I don't right. want to mislead anyone. Right. Rumors that we are discussing that we can't confirm. Yeah. I, that's exactly how we should put yeah. it. And uh, I thought this was another one that made a lot of sense just because you got Brian Fargo, one of the fathers of Fallout yes. in-house, and, and they just released Wasteland 3, which is fantastic. And I, I want to know maybe your read on the situation if they were to, again, this is more speculation driven, but I'm just curious how you how you feel based off someone who knows a lot more than me on the, the internal development of all these studios about what, if in exile were to do this do you think because we know that they're doing project cobalt which seems to be their big triple a game on unreal engine 5 right. um but do you think they're gonna take fallout back to the isometric days if they were to ever yeah. do that because i always thought that was like an option for them honestly but i don't I know if that's a mass too. appeal type option i think it's an option i it's, it's it's it definitely occurred to me where it's like uh again we're just trying to get fallout back out there you want something with the fallout name that, that keeps those fans excited and uh they're not, you know fallout 76 well you know they've definitely been able to bring that back and 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 that audience is all it does seem very happy with that game now uh you still want the uh maybe um the last taste of fallout in most people's mouths to be something different and maybe that something different could just be this like smaller project coming from in exile that it's okay that it's like fun and weird and isometric and can play around with stuff in the same way we we're just talking about with like sawyer can come at it from his own angle letting in exile have a smaller team come at it from their own angle and honestly i think both could happen right like they yeah, there's no reason that like they yeah like there's uh a, a lot of value in the fallout brand uh it's something that it feels like when you when you acquire bethesda it feels like really quickly fallout should become like this uh this pillar and almost like this mascot of like oh this is what xbox is it, yeah. it has that potential um but to realize that potential you need to act on it and i think that they should be willing to uh almost like mario where it's like you get the 2d marios and you get the mm -hmm. 3d marios mm -hmm. and you get the party games and the sports I games like that idea. fallout should almost be treated that way it seems like and they should be willing to uh, let it if the nxl team has the capacity has the willingness and wants to let them have a crack at it and, and, and maybe do isometric. I think there's a chance for that. Yeah, that that's a, a great mindset there. And so on the note uh, of a New Vegas 2, you had mentioned this seemed to be more of, because we use New Vegas 2 more as like a placeholder name, but it seemed like this was more just the successor of that game. A lot of people had interpreted yes. that as like, this is the direct sequel, same place. Again, it's too early to really say like where it's gonna be, but the idea behind the talks was like, what's following this up? Right, and, and that's the term that, that, that people were using like, New Vegas too, and like when they're when they're saying these sentences to each other that contain all these key terms that we care about, they were saying Fallout New Vegas too. That's why that's why that's how I reported it. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Like th there's no reason to assume that's going to mean a direct sequel that picks up the story or that is even set in in New Vegas. Like there's mm -hmm. uh, every reason to believe that when it comes down to it, and they need to to pick a setting or they need to pick like 
what this game is going to sort of be approaching that they're like, well, we have an opportunity to do a new setting and that's a huge part of, of releasing a new Fallout game. Right. Uh, we're not gonna skip on that opportunity just to call this thing New Vegas 2. Like it right. would definitely, uh, yeah, I would imagine they would probably continue that lineage, not just like spiritually, but there would probably be some links story-wise and character-wise that that could happen. Um, but I, I would expect them to want to have the, you know, the pop of saying, and we're taking place in, you know, wherever, uh, right. probably, probably not Colorado, even though it's wh where I live, but it's like, and I get excited about that, but you know, Wasteland 3 was just there. They'll probably do something else. So, but something in the West, I think that makes sense. Right. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's something that they've, that's a sentiment they've expressed since like 2013. I remember them saying, oh, we'll stay on the West coast. We'll let Bethesda Game Studios stay on the East coast. So it, it'd be right. funny I remember to hearing see that. all yeah. these years later that that stays alive. Um, now, again, this whole idea around reactivating the Fallout IP is to keep it from being dormant until foreseeably, like maybe 2030, when Bethesda Game Studios okay. would probably get out Fallout 5 if we want to be realistic about it. Now, a lot of these plans would involve building Fallout assets from the ground up. Do you think there's a stopgap remaster potentially in the works that they could use as like, let's get this out by... I'm gonna throw out 2024. Like, let's just get that out. So then we buy ourselves some time to, to feed Fallout fans because 76 is gonna continue to get updates. And then maybe 2025, 2026, we're, we're talking about a new Fallout game. Yeah, I, I, I do wonder like what Microsoft and, and you know, and Bethesda and everyone, uh, what their sort of take on remak remakes and remasters is right now. Cause uh, you know, they did a lot of work on backward compatibility and getting that stuff up and running really well. And it works really well in those games, look and play and, and, and run great, mm -hmm. like they perform really well. And it's like, okay, well, we did all that work. So like in those, these games now sort of have, feel more timeless than they did before. The original releases feel a little bit more timeless that, that they can at least withstand a couple of years of just being on the market and being able to be downloaded from Game Pass or be bought from the store. Uh, and I think they think about it that way quite a bit, but there's obviously still value in gaming. We've seen it for years and years where when you go in there and you remaster, remake, or, you know, or, or just kind of do something in between, mm -hmm. there's value in, in, in kind of getting stuff back out on shelves. And at the very least, like being able to sell the game for $60 again, there's, yeah. a, there's value in that and stuff. Like, you know, it, it's like you just kind of raise the average sales price by saying it's a remaster. Um, I, I, I think that philosophically Microsoft is seeming like they're a little bit like kind of uh, not against that, but like just avoiding that in many cases, um, except for like in their, among their biggest games. Uh, but I do think that, uh, again, with Fallout, it might be a special case where it's like, you know, let's go ahead and treat these games as they are, like, like as really timeless. Go, do, go in there, do the work, get them fully uh, upgraded for the new generation, uh, not just to like take advantage of stuff, but like to maybe like redo some assets and, and like rework the character models and stuff like that. Like common complaints, that, like that casual fans come in and they have when they're like, oh, all these characters are ugly. Uh, right. And it's like, yeah, okay, that's, that's fair. Maybe they could do something about that. Um, and I, I think there's, I think there's a potential for that to happen with a lot of these franchises. Fallout does seem prime for that, but again, it's like it's hard to tell uh, what the appetite in, in, internally is for something like that. So the other question I had for you, Jeff, was about exclusivity. Uh, again, probably too early to tell, but this has kind of been the anomaly amongst the Bethesda deal, and of course now with Activision in the mix and the way they're speaking about them, whether it's to appease shareholders and um, of course the the antitrust. We don't know quite yet, but I, I always wonder how, we know Starfield's gonna be exclusive, Redfall's gonna be exclusive, those are new things. Do you anticipate like if they do a New Vegas sequel, successor, whatever you wanna call it, do you anticipate that being exclusive perhaps? Yes, uh, yes, I do. And, and the reason I say that is because uh, I, I, I've been told flat out Elder Scrolls Six will be exclusive. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be exclusive yeah. 100%. And it's uh, and this is a decision that they made based on a lot of research, a lot of an analytics, a lot of math. Um, they considered every possibility. And when they looked at this deal specifically, the Bethesda deal, they determined that while, while it will cost them money not putting stuff on PlayStation, um, that they are treating it like the marketing budget of promoting Game Pass. And it's just like, it's, it, it, will, it will benefit Game Pass the most if it's not on PlayStation, they, they, they determine that. Uh, and so it's like uh, Elder Scrolls Six not going to PlayStation, uh, almost certainly to me that says the fall, any Fallout game wouldn't come right. to PlayStation, except for unless it's like a Fallout 76 successor mm -hmm. or something like that, like down the line, some other Fallout sure. game that is like an all my multiplayer first right. sort of thing. In those cases, who knows? All you know, I, I would imagine they want to get it everywhere. Right. But if it is a single-player sort of adventure RPG, 
uh, almost certainly it's going to be exclusive. Cool. All right. That's that's interesting to hear. Now on to a little bit more speculative stuff, and then you'll be out of here. So what I want to start off with is uh, the, the vibe at Bethesda Game Studios, right? I found this kind of an interesting thought that came across my head because I was wondering to myself, you know, we have Bethesda Game Studios as this studio has typically been very defensive of the, the Fallout IP. Like just uh, at the end of last year, Ryan McCaffrey was interviewing Todd Howard asking like, hey, what are you going to do with Fallout? And he's like, oh, we don't really know. We have a one pager for Fallout 5. We want to define what's next. So it seems like he didn't say never say never. Or I think he said never say never, but he was pretty defensive of the IP in general. And that seemed to be the vibe we all got from Bethesda since, say, Fallout 4. Um, so what do you think is the feeling from that studio internally as the grip may be loosening a bit? Is this Microsoft kind of putting a wedge in there? I'm not trying to make it a toxic negative thing here. No. But is it something where they're like, just, okay, sure, we understand where we're all at here? Yeah, I, I think that there's like there's two things at work in, within like Todd Howard when he when he's talking about that. It, it, there There is a sort of, um, you know, we do want it like we believe that we're the ones that should be defined what the future of this franchise looks like and yet there's also a confidence that when they get around to it they will be still still be the ones defining it no matter what happens with fallout um mm. and, and you know they've worked with obsidian before like they had obsidian do new vegas like that was their choice and, and you know and, and 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 todd howard might have had like his thoughts about it at that time but it didn't like necessarily hurt much i mean maybe maybe he uh is Maybe he does listen to the criticism and he listens to the like the fans who love New Vegas. Maybe yeah. that rubs him the wrong way. I I doubt that. I mean, I, I think I, I, he probably at the end of the day like looks at like the sales numbers or whatever. Says Fallout 4 did fine. Like I'm 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 fine. The games I release do great. I bet that's how he looks at it. And uh and, and so I think it's probably going to be pretty easy for as you said Microsoft to kind of st step in and be like not put a wedge in like, like I know you were just like suggesting that like as a possibility but it's like it's more like it's almost certainly more like hey listen Todd you are your one guy your team is working on you have plans for the future uh if we could clone you we would but let's be real here we want to keep Fallout like like we spent a lot of money on this stuff uh, it would be it would be helpful not just to Fallout not just to us but to you when you do get back around to Fallout uh, to kind of keep that stuff active and so that there's not some weird build up of like wow fallout 5 it's got to be this and this and this and this they're already going to get this other fallout from someone who's probably going to take a different angle so that when you come back to it and want to do it as your game you could just not you could completely throw all that stuff out just make right. your game and i i think that there's going to be a, a pretty easy argument to be made there and it will convince him and that seems to be what has happened sweet with, with this with this conversation that's begun is that right. everyone's sort of in, in agreement that this would be the best use of everyone's time to like get someone else on fallout with that in mind, I gotta put my my crosshairs on a game that uh, has been my mortal enemy for some years. Is is this kind of the wind down phase for seventy six? The only reason I ask that, not to be doom and gloom, is you know, I just take a look at the recent roadmap that came out, and I was just like, this is not to me speaking of a game that's got much left in it, right? It's it's in the I think fourth year of its life cycle. It was a ton of quality of life updates. It, it just seemed like it, it's not really going anywhere fast since Wastelanders came out, which was a significant content update, but it, it just seems to be stumbling now. And instead of going wide and gaining a new player base, I look at 76 as a game that's just sort of cannibalizing gradually the only base it has who, who loves it, as you right. mentioned earlier. Do you think because they they like do you think that effectively this will be it for 76 once that say remaster or new game comes around because i i've always been in the mindset and i get it i'm a little biased because i'm not a fan of the game but i've always been in the mindset that they've kept a new fallout game off the table for a while because they know it would just sweep the legs out from under 76 so do you feel like they know like it's it's starting to be that time and that team can maybe move on to something else eventually or do they plan to stick with it yeah, I think it's it's the harsh, cold reality of like what needs to happen to sort of get all these other things to happen where uh, resources are finite. Ta talent is especially finite right now. It's it's a very easy to lose a couple of key people and then go, go like, OK, well, we'll just hire to replace them and be out of luck because it's impossible to replace them right now because everyone is trying to hire those same people. Um, and so if you have those people kind of working away on this game that is 
winding down sort of naturally, it may be time to sort of take control of that and say, let's actually wind it down and, and get ready to move on to something else. Um, that see, like th that's what makes sense to me based on like kind of looking at the situation, looking at where they need to go and then kind of looking at the market as a whole. Uh, so yes, I, I, I agree with that assessment. Okay, cool. That's how I was feeling about it. Um, just two more questions for you, Jeff. So first Ooh. one is about reveal. Do you see this as being a lot of people thought the Outer Worlds 2 announcement, even though it was way ahead of time, it made sense because it was just saying, like, we're doing this thing like it's coming. We're doing it. Do you think if they agree ahead of E3, say, or, or whatever their summer showcase will be, um, do you foresee a Outer Worlds 2 moment where they're just like, hey, it's happening. It's coming because I feel like you mentioned like a big pop. Like, I feel like this is a big thing for the platform to be able to say, like, yeah, we're going to be doing this game like it, it is going to happen for sure and it's coming to xbox do you think they they pre-announce this or do they save it for when it's like really well and ready i mean I, we know what bethesda likes to do right they like to be really ready and they'll probably have they still will, they'll probably still have some say in like how this stuff happens i wouldn't be surprised if they try to really argue for that and we know that microsoft likes to announce things really early although recently internally i think at that last e3 um while while i thought it was a really really good e3 showcase i remember hearing internal reports of like going in people going into meetings and phil spitzer being like man we still just have a lot of cg trailers don't we and like sony's just gonna release a couple more game of the years and we're gonna have more cg trailers i can be very frustrated by that and recognizing the criticism of that um so i get the hunch that they are trending away from that more and more and more uh, and you know they'll probably still announce something like a fallout new vegas to whatever successor with a cg trailer but they'll they'll do it as part of a roadmap where it's like and then a couple months later we'll have gameplay and then six months later it's out okay. it's out the door that sort of thing I, I think this leans closer to how bethesda does stuff okay cool yeah that i just thought that'd be an interesting concept if they were like to really just pre-announce this thing like the outer worlds too because i think just the pop alone may be worth it for them but you definitely offer a good point there and then the last question, this is sort of in line with the, the remaster thing, but there were reports that a Gears of War collection was going to come. A couple of people corroborated it. I think you did as well. I'm not actually 100% certain. I, right? I just thought, I said it makes sense. I, it, okay. I was speculating, so I don't know for sure, okay. but that sound. I mean, it sounds right. Right. Do you think Xbox, if that rumor were to be true, do you think they're targeting other IP for similar, we'll say Master Chief Collection treatments. You know, obviously yeah. the Fallout IP makes a lot of sense there. Um, the Gears of War, of course, makes sense. Do you think that may be a direction they go in? Where you said, and it makes complete sense, I agree that, you know, with their backwards compatibility system there, it would almost be like a waste of their efforts on that front to then just a little bit remaster everything. Um, of course, as you also mentioned, like being on store shelves, there is a benefit there. But uh, do you think that they may try to take this collection route in the future with some of their IP? You know that that you, you bring bring up a good point there because like what what is the reason Gears of War is going to get a collection right now? Well, it's going to be a little bit longer between Gears games right now because the Coalition is working on their smaller thing and they're taking time to learn Unreal Engine Five and Gear Six is still kind of a, a ways off. So in the between now and then, let's do a collection. Let's let's do a little bit of work on these games and put them all in one and kind of get people excited about it makes sense i think fallout is obviously in the same exact scenario right where mm -hmm. it's going to be a long time between them it's already been a long time but it's going to continue to be quite a, quite some time before we get another fallout game so what do you do between now and then i i think a collection uh it, it's the kind of thing where it's like um especially for fallout where microsoft brings this stuff in and says okay we have this history this game that has this history a lot of you might have missed out on it here's like yeah sure they're, they're all on game pass but let's go ahead and, and put a little bit of an editorial spin on it and be like here is like the definitive way to just play through all these things from the very beginning if you want or if you want to start from three we get that start here and then then here's like you know a history lesson or whatever have a have someone like um digital ocean come in maybe i know they do mostly retro 2d games but like they can come in and like do support with like oh here's documentation internally of what these things are like and give like a behind the scenes get people nice. really into fallout because once you're in there you want to kind of know everything i think they could really sort of capitalize on that that makes a lot of sense yeah certainly a lot of options on the table for them it seems so i imagine yes. over time we'll hear more about that certainly through you <laughs> so Jeff, that's, that's all I've got for you, unless there's anything else you wanted to share. That, that's really all I had for you on, on this topic. I appreciate you lending me your time, man. 
no yeah no problem i thought we uh we could really i mean again there's not much to it but mm -hmm. i feel like once we start talking there's a lot of ways we can go and speculate and it's a lot of fun so yeah. thanks for having me on no of course it's funny right we we've i've had you on for more like concrete scoops where you've had more to share and this was our longest video together so <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate you coming sense. on being patient with me i was like oh it'll be 15 minutes jeff don't worry about it. it's 25 all right so i, I, I lost, I lost you track of time completely it's it's all good it's all We'd good love I had to fun. Hear that. <laughs> yeah all right jeff thank you so much for those who want to find more of you where can they go yeah uh, the, the, uh i've been sending people to my discord because that's like we got a good community there discord.gg slash game mess uh we hang out there i try to keep track of what's happening with the exploded e3 thing where it's everything we we, we do a lot of stuff in there we have game nights uh but you can get me on twitter i tweet too much so i try not to tell people not to follow me because it's like ah uh, you're just gonna get annoyed you're gonna <laughs> so don't do that but uh, yeah you can if you want and then um the giant bomb show is is grub snacks it's where i first talked about this it's where i just tend to talk about some of my scoops and stuff that's thursdays thursday mornings it is now free going forward it was a premium show i think we're going to be putting it on twitch going forward so if you ever want to check that out just follow giant bomb on twitch nice well with that ladies and gentlemen all of that will be linked in the description down below so go ahead give it a look jeff thank you again so much for your time Thanks, i really buddy. appreciate you man and with that ladies and gentlemen take great care of yourselves and we'll see you all in the next video stay sexy stay active i love you all peace